Hey everybody, we're here at the Raptor S Arena in Lebanon again, and they're having a horse expo today. And it's mostly all about draft horses because it's put on by the Show Me Draft Horse 4 Series. So check that out on Facebook. Go to your Facebook page, look up Show Me Draft Horse 4 Series is their name. It's a, that's a difficult name, but we'll work on it. <laughs> and uh, they're going to have showmanship training today, which is what I need for Oliver because I don't really know how it's judged. So I can learn to show him. I'm gonna. We're gonna try to get a hold of some of the people that put on the show here. Um, this summer, we came to the draft horse show here to learn, and that's in our video. Uh, we'll put the the link to the video in the description of this video. So if you haven't seen it yet, you can go back and watch that. It, it was really, a really well put on event, especially for their first year. And uh, this organization is doing things right. So we got a lot to learn today, a lot to see. They're even having a uh, stock dog demo which you know I'm interested in that and we'll just hang out today and see what we can learn and we'll show you some of the events so stay tuned. So like JR said this was held at the Rafter S Arena which isn't too far from us the drive wasn't bad they hold quite a few events here throughout the year so it's kind of fun and a neat little place. It was about 9 30 a.m when we got there so we walked around for a little bit and checked everything out there were some really beautiful horses there of course uh, it's always fun to see the big draft horses. There were a couple of food trucks and then they had brought in quite a few vendors to this event. So we walked around and checked everything out and kind of just stretched our legs and then it was time for the first class to start so we headed in to see what it was all about. So we're going to start just getting them ready and um, that begins with brushing, trimming them, putting our hoofs off, hoof black them so we're going to show you how to do that. Main roll, put um, rosettes in, four tops. Is there anything specifically that you guys are interested in? Because I want to make sure we hit those points. Yeah. Are those horses naturally that black? Or did you just ferment beard dye them? Right. <laughs> so I will tell you, some will stay just in their breeding. They will stay at black. But we've got some horses at home. You put them out in the sunlight just for a short period, or maybe not even in the sunlight, but they can start in the barn and they can turn brown. So, so these, some are, of it is brief. these are mostly stalled during the day and turned out at night? Then? In the summertime during the show season, yes. And that's how you keep them that black? Okay. Well, we also, you can dye them. Yeah. So if they turn brown or you know, even just a little off, um, we dye them. And there's some products out there um, that have made it extremely easy compared to what it used to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, it just, we use a Sullivan product, not to, but um, it's a cattle, just cattle it's, dye. It's a cattle dye, and um, we wash them, get them clean, and then uh, you mix it, and then you spray it on. We rub it in, and then you leave it on for 30 minutes, and then you rinse it, rinse it out really good, and they are black, and it yeah. is awesome. And when we show is if the horse we show a six horse hitch this year so um if the horse is going to be on the right side i have them um, uh, come to the right if they're going to be on the left side of the hitch i go to left so all i do is i just just do a simple braid and you want to hide the top of it and you just have i know you guys can't you know, one of these ribbons and each braid. If you're going to show for a couple of days, do you leave it or you take it down? No, if we day? take it out. Even if we have a class that morning, uh -huh. I take it out and redo it. Details. Details. I will tell you when you're showing, it comes down to details. When it's in bet hands. between you and another horse, you know, if you're doing a halter, sometimes it can be extremely difficult for that judge to decide, and it's that detail that's going to make the difference. So when I main roll, I have always liked to get on the horse because then I move with the horse. Um, however, you don't want to do that if the horse is not broke. We had a good friend get really hurt and she was a very well experienced horse person. If you don't, which is perfectly fine, a lot of people don't, they're on the right side. The only thing with that is like I said, the horse moves then you're constantly having to have somebody either move you or move the horse over. So you only, I, you know, my arms are only so long. <laughs> yeah, Again, you tiny on that <laughs> It's very important here for the mane to be very clean. There's a spray that I use that helps to kind of keep it laid down nice. Um, 
um, and just keeps it clean. So and there's going to be another segment here this afternoon on this um, where you can get up a little bit more close and personal with main rolling. But the key to it is it goes down the center, not too far to the left of the main, and it has to be tight. And I mean tight because, and that horse's head has to be high up in the air because if you let that horse's head go down, they're gonna pull that main roll out. And then that's gonna mess you up your rosettes. And then when you're going into a hitch class, your main roll and your rosettes gonna look like this. You want it to be perfectly straight and those rosettes perfectly straight and like sticking up. Um, so what is the fabric? That you're using? Is it rain? I don't know. No, I don't know what, what we don't make is. these. I we buy them from the lady, and I've actually we've had these for like eight years. We just keep them really clean. So is it like so somebody can, who sells them specifically yeah. for that? Yeah. yeah that's so all they, they do. That's okay. What they do. Okay. So they make the rosettes. They um, make the tail bows. I didn't know okay. that there was. Yeah. Okay. So what's the technique? Yeah, it's picking you want to come up. closer so you can see. Yeah, yeah. You so you can a couple of these so that I can replicate it. Yeah. And people hold their hands differently, and it's all where you get your strength. And I'll tell you, um, like I said, you have to keep this left hand down close oh, to the main. I'm sorry. And then you're okay. pulling on it to get it tight. So you want um, the main roll. The actual stitches to be tight mm -hmm. and, and right in the center so of the it's dress. oh it's just a three-way braid but yep. you're Four grabbing strings. only one part of hay a uh, hair at a time yep twist twist it first and then braid yeah so okay mm -hmm. so you want your stitches tight but also you want them tight to the neck because mm -hmm. you can braid it your stitch is tight and it'll be that far off off the neck of the horse. Right. You, don't want that. you want it sitting right on the neck of the horse. So then when you're judging or when you're you see somebody they'll go like this because they want to so feel it. Can you feel it? See how tight it is. Yeah. Very nice. I'm just gonna tie it off and then I'll put a rosette in. Now one thing that's like happening right now, which I need to get these redone. So when I say redone, see you can tell this wire is kind of it's been used. I want it to be perfectly straight and like really s straight up and down. So a lot of hitches right now are putting them up high, like, like this. I mean, they're high, which is fine, but these are used. I need to get them replaced. So I'm cheating because what I say before, I want these to stand up really nice. I don't want them to look like this and this all the way down the neck. So right now, because I need to get them re redone, I'm making them real short. So in a hitch horse, you'll have five. In a halter horse, you can have seven or nine. Again, depending on the length of the horse's, depending on the length of the horse's neck. If you put nine in a short, ne short neck horse, you've done that. You know, again, it's a it's optical illusion. So you've kind of done that horse a disservice. Is it short for time? But really, normally I would picture where that collar goes, and I would stop it just right before that collar. So tying a tail is it's just a three-strand braid. And it's a three-strand braid, simple, but the hardest thing about it is getting the top correct and crossing your hair underneath to get it started. So you just pull your sides apart put the middle up through and then cross your sides underneath and then just even your hair up and for today I just brought a twine string but usually I use shoelaces just a round softer shoelace because it doesn't break the hair because if you're tying tails at several shows by the time you some horses might go in four or five six classes at a show you start breaking the hair and then you have by the end of the season you don't have much hair to tie can you do the same um thing if the horse has a, a long tail you mean a full tail not dog yeah well what you usually do is you just braid put a bun up here yeah. and then a lot of people will is it a french braid where they put all the yeah they yeah. braid everything up and then still put their bun up at the top so you can yeah. still show a full tail oh yeah, oh, yeah. Still, okay. it's not like okay but the biggest thing is 
and some horses like for a halter class that are long tailed I've seen them just um, French braid that hair up so it's not everywhere okay silly question I do they actually dock the tailbone itself yep. in addition okay yep, I, I just assumed it was just the hair that got cut no nope. oh my goodness it's no different than yeah, docking, I dogs, yeah. docking dogs or cropping dogs tails or cropping dogs ears and what age do they normally do it? As a colt? Yeah. Usually, yeah. usually, I mean, a month old. Yeah. And these, I mean, it's a very painless deal. Um, I mean, it hurts for about 10 minutes. Probably 30 seconds. <laughs> Besides tradition, that tail docking, isn't it true, like, when you're really pulling logs or doing some heavy work, like, the tail is in danger of getting caught in, in the I think a lot of it lines and could be pulled off. And the thrasher machines probably started as much docking as anything. Yeah. <laughs> so that horse isn't swishing his tail and gets that run through that belt in that thrasher machine. Yeah. Because I've heard of them being ripped off from those. Yeah, and an adult <laughs> horse getting a tail ripped off would be a lot more traumatic okay. than docking so like, it. In a colt, when they dock them, all you do is you shave the hair like from here down just clip it all off and you find where that joint's at and you take um, the green elastorator bands or even surgical tubing and you slide it up on that joint on a female ideally you want it right at the bottom of her um, and then you just slide that rubber band up put it in the joint put it on there wiggle around for about 10 seconds and they're done falls off in about two weeks questions yeah what are the questions What's the easiest class with one horse to, to start? Like to get like in the Fox Strider world, there's the front arena where you really have to be squared away and know what you're doing, but then there's also the versatility arena where you can put just as much work in, but if you don't know nothing you can start there too and not embarrass yourself. Well, unfortunately in the draft horse world <laughs> you get to go in with everybody. Okay. There's no like so, yeah. some shows no, do like, have an amateur course class. course class or something. Some you can shows start do with. have an, an amateur class. Yeah. Um, but most of like if you're gonna go in a car class, either you're gonna go in the men's or ladies' car class with everybody else. Mm -hmm. if that's and that's what with you like the, the performance horses. Mm -hmm. So that's what you were talking about, like the big front end, you know, a lot yeah. of animation, head up high. You're gonna be with that. Nice. But if you want to be with, um, not farm, but um, pleasure driving, mm -hmm. where maybe they're they're not checked up so high and they're more like, you know, a, a slower pace, there. there are classes like that at shows. Well, the only draft horse show I've been to in person, not just watched on YouTube so far, was this, this one. Yeah. This year. And I saw that they had a farm hitch class that mm -hmm. looked pretty easy mm -hmm. to get your feet wet in. but. That was a team class, and I only have one so far. Yeah. So I thought about hooking a fox trotter up next to him. <laughs> <laughs> and for experience, like if this show goes on, that was here this year, it goes on next year, there'd be no reason why you couldn't go in a pleasure class and do a ladies' card or the men's card or whatever, just for more experience, I think. As long as you would talk to a... Yeah. That's one thing I will tell you about the draft horse people, though. It is a family. We have... we've been in this I mean so many of us have been in this since we were little kids and we have grown up and <laughs> that is how the draft horse community is and we all help each other somebody forgot something go over Kurt I guarantee he's gonna loan it to us you know or any of these other people that are here helping today it's it's very much like that and a lot of us like I said have, have grown up in this so we're always willing to help other people and 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 grow you know I mean there's a lot of draft horses out there. They need homes. And they, I just pulled this horse out of the pasture last night. He just came out this morning after. Well, they they were shown most of the summer, so I've not clipped her hair or done anything like you would for a show. So that's this is kind of what they'll look like probably in the spring when yes. you pull them out. So like a good example of stuff I would clip off just on legs. Well, is all this on their legs? Up here, clean all that up. All the belly hair, I would clip all that off. We're just starting to put it on for the winter, but I would clip all that off. Just to get it up, clean it up. 
usually take the main and kind of level it out. So that's a common uh, practice or something that you do is, is the cutting of the main like that with the draft horses? Yeah. Yeah. You can probably sorry, we're cutting what, the like main short uh, fox trotters that we've been around. You you would never cut their mane like that. So that's a common thing to do with draft horses. That's something for, you'd for want show, to for showing. If you want to for showing because it just cleans it up. So for instance, I mean this horse has had her mane trimmed, shortened a few months ago. But what you're doing by shortening, yeah. If I were to redo this, I would shorten this mane to about right here. Really? Yep. And here's the reason why. Look how much more neck this horse looks like when you shorten it. Oh, so it's all about showing the neck off. Yep. Optical illusion. Okay. Yep. So you take this horse. Okay. And you just, for instance, right here, you shorten that up to there. See how much more of that neck you can see already? Yeah, okay. So that's, I mean, that's what you're. And that's for any draft breed, not just. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, pretty much I if you're showing. Yeah, no, no. Oh, on no. Gypsy banners, banners. That's okay. That's, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you cut your mane, like, is there like a guide, like, like a hand whip? Like, how do you know where to? So, uh, what I use is basically the length of this comb. Okay. That's what I seem to like. And sometimes I'll go shorter. It depends on the horse. Okay. People um, just really have their preference. Your preference, yeah. You'll see some hitches that they're... I mean, I've it, seen some of them where they're that short. Right. But you have to remember, when you're main rolling, it's going to get shorter. It's going to get the lot harder, more difficult to get that to lay down. Yeah, after it's done, it might want to stick up, especially... If it's Like, if you go to a Belgian horse, um, some of those horses have a little coarser mane. Some of them have a nice, silky, right. soft mane. Same with Clyde. Some of them have silky mane some of them have wire for hair and if you were to shorten those up they're just going to stick straight up at the very beginning she talked about feeding them up good to make them look good do you guys do any extra like i don't know like workouts like for muscle definition like pull them on a heavy load up a certain way or uh, not necessarily a heavy load uh usually start on a sled in the spring mm -hmm. just a two horse training sled not like you know not like a pulling horse sled or anything just pulls a little bit harder um, and I tend to work up, work them on hills, go up down the hills, just strengthen them up. And then as you get closer to the shows, you need to start building their cardio up. You need to start giving them some long capacity in the long seat. You need to start doing some cotton, but most of it is uh, just a lot of walking. Okay. That cardio, this isn't related to showing, but just it's also my first time training a draft horse because mine is a two-year-old and he's, I just broke him in the last two weeks to pull him a cart. Um, and I'm basing everything I know off of a lifetime of fox trotters, so it's like night and day. How, how much can I expect him to go? Like is a three-mile trot a lot for a draft horse? To trot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be a lot. Okay. He ain't gonna make it three miles. No. Quit that. Um, originally, draft horses, they're they're, they're bred for pulling and working. I mean, originally. Mm -hmm. They're made to walk. That's what they were made for. To walk, pull a plow, field work, you know, pull your, you know, groceries, the milk to the store, everything. That's what they were used for. So, in your training, as far as for showing, I feel most of your work needs to be walking. And the reason I say that is because if you all you want to do is trot, you're going to start having so lameness issues. Okay. If, if all you do is take them out and start trotting, you're going to have some issues. Well, I've noticed too, like in the walk, he has like a very slow and like coming from the box trotters again, almost annoyingly slow walk. But if I can pester him and get him to walk out good, but it's one hair before a trot. Like, is that good to push that walk, or do you just let them walk slow? You, they can walk at whatever speed they want to, ideally. It's the trot that you want to, um, th that's where you want to control your speed more as far as how fast or slow they're trotting. Yeah. Because some horses need to travel fast to get animation. Some horses can move, have a lot of animation, and not cover any ground. You want that, ideally, I want a happy medium. I don't want them to feel like they're just running away to get that animation or it looks like they're running almost to a run. I want that happy medium between a super slow trot and just that horse that covers ground, moves nice and doesn't 
you know, isn't real choppy. Because yeah. some draft horses can be very, very choppy. They'll just sit there and do this and not cover any ground. After that first class, we walked around a little bit more and we ended up meeting a really nice family who raises Clydesdales. Okay, everybody, I'm here with Chuck Luter. Chuck, I'm J.R. Rosa, Homestead Horsemanship. Hi. And uh, we found another Clydesdale breeder, so we got a, or somebody with Clydesdales, so we got real excited and we've been telling them about Oliver and we wanted to introduce their horses. So who do we have here? This is Dora. Dora, she came from Canada originally. I got her as a yearling and she's like, oh, 15 now. And she's Aww. had six foals. Aww. Okay. And uh, so Canada, isn't that where that Willoway breeding is that's from? That's where Willoway is. Yep. So does she have any Willoway breeding in her uh, being from Canada? I don't think so. Okay. No, she comes from the, like the east side of Canada where all, well, not all the Willoway, a lot of the Willoway is over on the west side on Alberta. Okay. But they're, they have more farms throughout Canada as awesome. well. Cool. Very cool. And she's what, 17 hands? Uh, she's a little over that. You can't really tell it in this grass when you get down to her. She's, yeah? She's, oh, yeah. Very and big she part. may have shrunk too. The horses do that as they age. As they age. You said she's 15. Like yeah. So I know she's at least 17. And what is her Aww. primary job? Like, you know, I'm still learning the terms like wheel horse. The, what's the middle horse called? Swing. Swing and then the lead horses are lead. Right. Or lead. Yeah. 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 What does she do? She's mostly, uh, we don't do multiple hitches. We do a team. Uh -huh. We don't do four ups or six ups. Okay. And uh, she's our resident training horse. Like we got younger horses or ones that haven't been uh, broken yet mm -hmm. or whatever. She's our go to horse Aww. to team them and uh, hitch with. Because she's so calm and easy going and yeah. no, she doesn't really get spooked very easy. <laughs> okay, and then who's this? This? She's this tall. is Lorelei. Holy Lorelei? cow. She Aww. is she is our she's six she's, over six foot. She's eighteen it or in her in her prime she was eighteen three. Wow. Uh, so I don't know if she's still quite eighteen three. She might be. She's the tallest horse we own. Okay. She's huge. <laughs> yeah, she is big. <laughs> uh, and how, what's her age? Nine. Nine? Okay. Lorelei is nine. Okay. And she's out of our most prolific mare, the mare that's had like 10 babies and, and I may be telling you wrong maybe 11 she may be pregnant with the 11th baby I can't really remember mm -hmm. but uh, she comes out of her and then we had a full sibling to this horse same sire same mom that was about this short really oh no kidding. oh yeah and you just never know you no, never know when you weird. breed them so oh, that's and do you crazy. like what desirable for you do you like them as big as possible or middle or what do you like like that's hard to put a harness on. It is. You ain't no exactly a giant yourself. Yeah. No. <laughs> her her biggest uh, value to me, at least, was like she's gonna have big babies. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so she's had I think five now. No. Yep. Five babies. Good mama. Yeah. How cool. Very cool. And what's your what's, what's well? Your... I, you probably have to ask you what's your social. What's the social? How do we find you? Or how do the viewers? Your Facebook. Look oh, fa our Facebook, Shadow, Shadow Mountain. Mountain. Shadow, Shadow Mountain. Mountain. Shadow, and it's spelled weird. It's C H A D E A U. Yeah. Okay. okay. On so Facebook. Kind of, kind of French. Yeah, spelling. yeah, yeah. But not Chateau. It's Shadow. Okay. And Shadow. it's on Facebook. Correct? Yep. Okay. Shadow okay. Mountain Clyde. And they, they have a, a really pretty video of a black stallion yeah. on there you like yeah, to see. Yeah, it's gone viral. Yeah. I've seen it already before Very I met them. Very beautiful stallion. It's pretty funny. I was watching it this week even. Yep. Um, and I'm talking them into <laughs> creating a uh, YouTube channel. So yeah. comment if you want to see these guys on YouTube. Yeah. If you want to see Clydesdales. I'm going to try to make friends with them and we'll get maybe we can get Oliver some real, real knowledge because we've kind of been laughing because I'm a good fox trotter trainer. So I've done my whole life and I'm stumbling through learning this. Uh, but I'm so far, knock on wood, and I'm not trying to brag, I think I'm having great success. My horse is doing everything I want him to do and he's doing it easily. And have you hooked him three times? Yes. That's what they always say. They say the third time is when they're going to... Oh, yeah. it was when, when they'll act out. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, no, I've, yeah, probably up to about eight or ten times now. Yeah, he's doing yeah. good. And uh, we're pulling a card. I showed you the card yeah. video, didn't I? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay, well, thanks for showing us. All right. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs> okay. Feathers. <laughs> That's why we actually have Clydesdales. We love the feathers. But it's a double-edged sword. It's work. And it's hard to keep them clean. It's definitely, you do it because you love it. So what we do, like, if we're going to go to a show, we're going to wash them at least like three times at home before we go to the show. 
kind of pre-wash and it's just like washing any other part I mean we use soap hot water try and get the because what they'll, they'll get this grease stuff cleaning in here and getting into the skin I don't know if you, you really can't see it there but a lot of the stuff you really have to dig in it to get out to get the dirt and grime out of it and when you go into a show and you want it out on the first time that we wash them at home we use bluing in our mixture and you have to be careful with this stuff because you can end up with blue or purple uh, hair if you get it too strong or if you leave it in too long usually what i like to do is soak their soak their hair with this take a bucket of this and uh, sponge and sponge it on and then and then work it in and then add shampoo to it and then the shampoo helps to not make the stuff stain it there's, there's a lot of different products and everybody does things different and you guys all know this before since you talk to five people you can get five different answers so it's just you have to kind of trial and error and whatever works best for you we like this uh, white and bright we started buying this years ago and we could buy it for less than ten dollars and now it's up to like 18 i think this mane and tail shampoo any kind of shampoo works nothing special then we condition and you can buy horse conditioner mane and tail conditioner but over the years i found that i like pantene and i try and find the stuff that says uh either smooth and sleek because a lot of uh, feathers when it, you probably won't see it or can't can't tell but some feathers are really like curly and others are just like straight um, from a show's perspective you want a horse that has just nice straight long feathers that just yeah. just hang there in fact they, they they're so silky they just kind of you know hang right next to the leg and, and a lot of that is genetics I mean, you can only do so much with products. And that's the same with anything when you're doing anything, any type of horse. I mean, you know, genetics come into play on how their conformation and how they're, they grow. Clydes are notorious for uh, getting sores on their legs by these feathers. And a lot of people, they call them scratches. You'll hear them called scratches, um, mites, and other things. And we found ways to kind of work with that. And I don't know if anybody has clives or hair, they, if they have any issues with those sores, we might be able to help you with ways to get rid of those. But it, it's a long process. It's not an overnight fix. Got a couple products here. Um, and I didn't bring the mineral oil. Maintenance on the feathers. I mean, if you're gonna be really diligent and you want your feathers to look as good as they can, you wanna keep these feathers oiled up with mineral oil and you can do that two or three times a week and of course you're going to say well oil doesn't that you know doesn't it attract dirt yeah it does <laughs> it, but it, it's all about getting that hair to not break off and it grow long and so oil is the one thing the other thing is uh if you're dealing with those uh scratches or mites or anything like that you can use uh what you put on the the oil, you can either make a paste with this, or you can just put this on afterwards and work it in. I've had a lot of people say, well, where do you get that stuff? It's powdered sulfur. And it, it's an antifungal, and that's what keeps keeps their legs good. And you can mix it in the mineral oil, uh -huh. or you or yeah, put yeah, it on you after? Can, either one. You can make a paste of it, you know, to where you can paste it on. Okay. Or you can just oil their legs and then throw, you know, throw this on and, and just and just work it in. I'll have to wash it off. No, nope. no, nope. nope. it's sulfur doesn't. You think, oh god, that's gonna make their legs stain yellow, but it doesn't. That product, it, that's kind of handy. And the other one, you, this is a must-have. Okay, this is a concoction. It's a uh, baking. What's that stuff? Not baking soda. No, not baby powder. Come on, thickens gravy. Come on, you guys. Oh, cornstarch. Cornstarch. Okay, so I buy cornstarch by the 25 pound sack. Oh, wow. Not by the dollar box. And then um, I mix it with a product, and it's hard to come by, of course. We call it wood flour. 
It comes down from Canada. I think you can buy it from Ship Shawana up in it. Uh, Ship Shawana from Bob. Anyway, it's real fine sawdust. And what we use this stuff for is when we go to the shore, we use it at home too. If we want to dry a horse, because you know, when they leave the wash rack, those feathers take forever to dry. And you spend all that time cleaning up and making them look good. And now you're going to walk back to the barn, the stall, or whatever, and it's going to just collect dirt and dust. So then we'll take this stuff, and it's just a drying agent. And you work it in, you know, in the hair, like this, back in the feathers, all this stuff. And it sucks up the sucks up the water. And that's what they use. That's what they'll put on after you wash them at the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You see, yeah. If you go to a show and you see Clyde people, they will always stand in this big white pile. Some people put down a tarp, and after they're done, they sweep it all up, and then they'll reuse it. There was quite a bit to see, and we unfortunately missed most of the cow dog demonstration. But right here, we caught a little bit of the tail end of it. One of the neat things I wanted to point out was that bay horse right there is a Clydesdale quarter horse draft cross that the guy cowboys off of. And I'm really starting to get interested in these draft crosses lately and I want to see more of them and I'm thinking about trying to get a quarter horse myself to cross Oliver with. This was a colt starting demonstration where the man is going to start with a a young horse that is not even trained to um, lead yet and the mare that he is riding is another draft cross it's a, out of a blue roan quarter horse mare and it watch how this horse helps him start this colt she is so intelligent and very handy too and it's another reason why after this sale I started looking for a roan quarter horse mare that's you were saying it was <laughs> It was very unfortunate that they didn't shut the generator off and the background noise was very loud. It made it hard to hear the man giving the presentation and it really degrades the quality of this video. But there's still a lot of interesting content here for you to see. Where that horse he's riding knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. It's like keeps bumping it with its nose, like take another step. There you get a better look at that blue roan quarter draft cross. Um, if you got a good quarter horse roan mare that you want to donate to my farm for Oliver to romance, let me know in the comments. You just want to make sure that you lift it up to the bottom of their chin just like Jamie did. So you don't brush or bang their eyes or, or their ears. So. See how he brought that up at the bottom of it, just all the way up to the bottom of his chin. Always. But then you don't want to like let it go where it just slams on the horse's shoulder. So you got to bring it down slow. So a lot of times, you know, if your collars are heavy, make sure you got a big, strong guy like Jamie around to to put them on. Because one thing that can 
sour a horse up really fast is just letting that collar just slam against its shoulder. Then he's putting the hames on and getting them nice and tight. Can you talk about the collar fit? Yeah, um, the collar fit, you know, some, some people on a show collar like them big so they set back farther on their shoulder and show off their shoulder, but you want to be able to get a hand in the side and usually, a, you know, a hand in the front. If it's a little long on it, you might put a, a pad up in the top because you can't just have 12 show collars around of every different size. So sometimes you can wedge it with a pad on the top or something like that. But then he's doing the back pad next. Per horse, I mean, you could, it could be anywhere from, I don't know, what's a, what's a bio set cost nowadays, right? I, I don't have any idea. Like, maybe 15, 1500 for a single horse, and you could go all the way up to 5000 for a nice leather set, or 6000 Um it just depends. Then he, he put the britching on and you want to you want to make sure your britching fits well because this is your backing device you know so you got you want to make sure it's in the middle of the butt and not like hanging way low or not riding up because if you had it set way too high and you go to back it could slip over and under the tail or even over the tail so you want to make sure it's right in the middle there then the, the tug setting too, you got you want to look at your wagon because, and when you hook them up to your wagon, you don't want there to be any tension points. So if if the double trees, depending on where the double trees are, are the evener is set, you want this uh, trace to be in a straight line. So you don't want there to be a, if you have it cranked up high here and your evener is real low, then you'll put when this when they pull you'll put pressure on the back pad and cause soreness really because they're in order for that to straighten out it's got to pull down on that back pad does that make sense so you don't you want to make sure you put no pressure points in that so when they're moving forward you want to see a straight line in your tug or trace in your your quarter straps here connect to your pull strap and you want to make sure that they have room here. This is perfect. You want it to come straight down from your collar here. You don't want it be, to be too tight down here because it's also going to cause a pressure point. So when they pull, they got to be able to get off their shoulder or get the pressure off their shoulder. And most people drive, you see there's two bits and I'm just, you may be well aware of this, but I'm going to say it anyway, but uh, most people in draft horse world drive with two bits. One is a check bit to check the horse's head into place, which is the small bit you saw. And then the other is the driving bit. So um, we don't like to very, very rarely go without a check bit because you're cueing your horse two different things off of two different bits. So this is just cueing it to say, hey, put your head up this high and the other one is saying you know steering and driving with this horse has an overcheck on which is hooked to the collar right here it goes over the top of their head and it comes down into their mouth oh so what you can and so this is basically some horses will really take advantage of you if they can get their head and they get their head down and they bury it against their neck, they will take you for a ride. Huh. So, all we do is we put this check on, hooks to the collar, wow. and it keeps their head where we would like their head to be. That's a new one, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it, it will, not only is it, you know, keeping it up so you can drive them well, but it also puts it in a desirable position. Huh. So we, you know, sometimes so we we're can... adjusting these things to the half an inch because we're like, because we're trying to get a high headset, but also round and collected and not sticking their nose out in the air. 
So you want them high and round. Clyde sails, I, I didn't use as much overchecks because mm -hmm. it was just too much okay. for them. Okay. Um, That's what we have as a Clyde But then Pertrans and Belgians have a little bit more push and they, they want to tuck more mm -hmm. for you. So that's pulling the tuck out of them and pulling them up. But if you go too far, then their nose is sticking out. <laughs> so, and you don't want to do that. And then they aren't in your bit collected in your hands too. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to get them high, but a pretty arched look. And, and it needs to be to each horse also, yeah. because some horses over tuck, which the over check really helps with that. And other horses um, want to point their nose. So, or, or naturally wanting to carry their nose forward. Well, this accentuates pulling your nose forward sometimes, so you want to go with a little bit different side, check. Side check or a different. And you can, there's other styles of check bits too that, you know, help with little things. Each horse is different, so you have to remember that. Mm -hmm. It's not like a, a mold where it's all the same. Yeah. You gotta work to each horse. Yeah. And when you're driving a team too, you want to, so you've got the shank on the bit with different positions in the bit and the farther down on it you go the more leverage you get and obviously the lighter the horse will be in your hands so but when you're hooking them up as a team you want to try to get them as equal in your hands as you can so maybe i don't know where you bit that horse in the bit it, yeah so all the way all the way up and some a lot of people would say in the bit so you'd go all the way up and then he's got this horse down one on the shank, and that's to make him even in his map, even in his hands. So you don't want one horse like pulling your arms off and the other one, you know, super light. So you would, so like he said, every horse is different. So you gotta, you know, assess each horse that way. When you're hooking, you always start at the front with your steering wheel. You always hook your steering wheel first. First thing you hook, then you start here and work your way back. When you're unhooking, you start at the back and work your way front. So your lines will be the first thing you hook and the last thing you unhook. That way if they try to step off on you, you, you can grab the lines or you hopefully have them in your hands and you can control them at that point. You always have control of the horses first. So like Jamie said, you hook up the steering wheel first because. Mm -hmm. If you get them hooked to the wagon and you don't have the steering wheel hooked up, it's a bad situation. <laughs> I've seen it before. There ended up being so much footage that we got and so much good information given that we decided to break this video up into two parts. So if you've enjoyed this video, we're going to put the second part out here in the next couple days. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. And before you click off, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We sure would appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time. God bless you all.